In this video, I'm going to show you how to allow the user to select a file and then how to copy data from that file. Additionally, you'll discover how to optimize the process, which is crucial for effective data analysis. If you want to try this code for yourself, then make sure to download the source code from the link in the description below. So let's go ahead and jump right in. To allow the user to select a file in VBA, we use the get open file name function. This function gives us access to the Windows open file dialog and allows us to change its behavior in some very useful ways. When we add the parentheses after the function name, you can see all the parameters. The parameters for get open file name are all within square brackets and this means that they are optional. In other words, if you don't supply a value, then the function will use its default values. The return value of the function is the file name. So let's declare a variable here and this is declared as a variant because if the user clicks on cancel, then false is returned instead of a string. Let's add a debug print line to print the name of the selected file to the immediate window. We press F5 to run the code and you can see the Windows Open dialog is displayed. The things we can change are the title, the file filter, and we can also change the file selection to allow us to select multiple files. Let's select a file and then click on Open. You can see that the full file name is printed to the immediate window. Shortly we will use this to open a workbook and copy data. Now when we write the code, we need to handle the case where the user clicks cancel, so we add the following line. If file name does not equal false, then we want to enter inside the if statement. Now if we step through the code and click cancel, you can see that the file name is now false. Therefore, it will not reach the code between the if and end if statements. As the parameters are optional, we can write them by putting in the correct number of commas. However, a much better way to do it is to set the parameter using its name and colon followed by equals. Now it is clear what parameter you are setting and it's unlikely that you select the incorrect one. We set the title here to please select file and we run the code again using F5. You can see the title at the top has changed to the text that we provided. If we press F1 on any function in VBA, it will open up the Microsoft help page. This is useful for seeing the basic parameters and the uses of a particular function. To get open, file name has five parameters of which we use three. File filter, which allows us to specify the file extension. Filter index, which is used to select a filter when you have multiple file filters, and it's very rare that you would need to use this. Title sets the title as we've seen. Button text is only for the Mac. And finally, multi-select, when we set this to true, it allows the user to select multiple files. So this is the default file filter. It will display all files in a folder. If we want to display Excel files only, we can change the extension like this. The part of the string to the left of the comma is what is displayed in the box, and the part of the string to the right of the comma is the actual filter. When we run the code, we can see that only Excel files are displayed. If you want to display multiple types, then we separate with a semicolon like this. When we run the code, you can see that both text files and basic files are displayed. Allowing the user to select multiple files can be very useful in some applications. To enable this, we simply set the multi-select parameter to the value true. When this parameter is true, get open file name will return an array instead of a string. So we have to write different code to handle this situation. First of all, we check if the return value is an array. If it's not, then we know that the user click cancel and we ignore any code that would use the file name. If it is an array, then we use a for loop to read through all the items in the array. We declare file as a variant and then we use the for each statement to read each item in the file name array. Let's run the code and see how it works. We select three different files. Then we click open. You can see that the three file names were printed to the immediate window. Now that we have the file name, we are going to copy data. We're going to start off with the basic way to do it, and then we will optimize the code. If you're doing serious data analysis, then this will be a game changer. To copy the data, the first thing we do is open the file using the workbook's open function. This takes a file name as a parameter. We also set the read-only parameter to be true as we are only reading from the file and this prevents any issues with the file already being open. The workbook's open function returns a workbook object. So we declare the workbook object and assign it to the function using set. 
Then we get the range of data using the worksheets collection of the workbook variable. We use one to give us the first worksheet, and from this worksheet, we get range A1. We then use current region, which will give us back all the adjacent data. We can use the range copy function to copy the data from the worksheet in the selected file. Then we can use paste special and the parameter Excel paste values to copy the values to the sheet in our current workbook. Finally, we close the workbook using the workbook close function. We set save changes to false so it will ignore any accidental updates we make to the workbook. Let's run the code to see how well it works. And you can see that we are presented with the Windows Open dialog. We then select the first data file and then we click open. You can now see that the data was copied from this workbook to the data worksheet in our current workbook. But here's where things get interesting. Instead of using the slow range copy and paste method, we are going to change this to use the lightning fast assignment method. To do this, we do the following. We first of all create a range destination variable. Now the reason that we're doing this is because we're going to be referencing the range a number of times and this makes the code a lot neater. So we'll just copy what we have here, the, this workbook, worksheets, etc. and we'll assign the range variable to this. We put the destination range on the left hand side and we use the value property. Then we place the equals which means we will assign the right hand to the left hand side. We then place the source range on the right hand side and we also use the value property here. One slight difference with assignment is that we need to resize the destination range to match the source range. But this is very easy to do. We use the resize function of the range. We set the range row size to the rows count of the source range and we set the range column size to the columns count of the source range. Now we run the code again and we're going to select the same file from the Windows Open dialog and you'll see that I wrote the results to the worksheet as expected. Now the big difference is that copying data this way is much faster than using copy and paste. We're going to make this code even better. Typically in the real world we would often process the data between reading it from the file and writing it to the worksheet. What I mean by processing is that we might filter the records or alter the data in some way. Using ranges to process the data is very slow so we will convert this code to use arrays. To do this we declare a variable as a variant and we assign it to the range. VBA will then automatically convert this to a two-dimensional array. We then assign the destination range to the array and this will write it to the worksheet. Now we have to change the resize arguments as these are different from an array than we would use with a range. We use the uBound function to get the last row and last column in the array by setting the second parameter to 1 or 2. When you run this code, it'll run exactly the same way, but when you process the data, it will run much faster than if you use the range. And this can make a significant difference if you're doing data analysis on a lot of data. Now, typically, how we would process the data will be with a for loop. So in case you haven't seen it before, this is how we would typically run through the array. We would use a for loop with L bound to give us the first row and U bound to give us the last row, and we would then update each row as required. Now let's make this code even better. Here is the function copy range to array. This function uses the code that we've seen already. It opens a given file, copies the data to an array and closes the file and it will then return us the array. The beauty of using this code is that we can now replace the code we have with a function call so anytime we want to read from a file to an array we can use this function. We replace our code like this. We call copy range to array and then we simply pass it the file name the sheet name we want to read data from in that file and then we pass it a variant variable which will be converted to an array. We move our declaration of the array to the line before the call to the sub and then we can actually remove all these lines. You can see now that our code is much neater and more readable. Another improvement we can make is to replace the code for writing to a worksheet with a procedure. Here I have the array to range procedure which copies an array to a given range. It does all the complicated resizing for us and makes our code much more readable. So let's update our code to use array to range. So we can simply call array to range and then we have the array as the first parameter and we have the range as the second parameter. So this is the range we're going to read to and we only need one line. You can see this code is much simpler than the code we started with and much more readable. Let's run the code just to show that it actually works. 
And here we select the data to file and you can see that it brought back the data that we expected. The code is neater and will run way faster, especially if you're processing a lot of data. If you're doing a lot of data analysis and would like to learn about optimizing your code, then I recommend that you check out this video on arrays, collections and dictionaries. If you enjoyed this video, then please click on the like button. And if you'd like to get notified of my upcoming videos, then click on the subscribe button and the bell icon beside it. Hope to see you on the next video.